Knock wood, I don't have any lack of ideas. My inspirations right now are this community. I want to write good plays for these actors. My own backyard, literally and metaphorically. You write what you know. So I like to cram as much information and music and art into my head as I possibly can. The thing that works best for me is when I research and research and research and research and know the background of everything inside out. Well, with Buffalo Soldier, I did so much research that when I finally got down to writing it, it felt like they were all talking to each other and I had to keep up to write down what they were saying. That's exactly what happened with Songs from Bedlam. These people with problems started speaking to me and wanting their stories told. I never started out to form a theater company and it was founded on Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Somebody raises their hand, they say, Dr. T, um, how are we gonna do a play about Uncle Tom's Cabin when we don't have any black people in the class? And the inspiration dropped in right then. I said, we're gonna do it as a minstrel show. I usually think this is gonna work. I'm not gonna have five doors. I'm not gonna be able to make anybody fly. Through the process of deletion, you come up with a spark that works artistically. So it looks like a choice. <laughs> My favorite thing that we've written together, Paul and I, has been two bits. That started with Paul and I on dinner break in the orchestra pit in 2002 saying, where should we put a fun show? And we decided on the barbershop community kind of place. Watching your own stuff be put on stage, it's an incomparable thrill. And to do it in your hometown, blessing is the word that comes to mind. And when they're all in a team effort like that, very gratifying. And I stand at the back of the house being so proud of them and for them. Sitting when, at home by yourself, running the lines in your head, checking the rhythms and everything. You try to make the best choices, but you don't really know what it's going to sound like until you hear Katrina Lewis or Deborah Wagner say it out loud or sing it out loud. And that's the most rewarding part. My plays have been directed by other people at other places, and sometimes it's horrific. I've certainly had productions where I thought they didn't get it. Maybe no one could have gotten it. Maybe it was my fault. Maybe the script was ungettable. They just didn't understand the play. I mean, there was a magical quality to it that they weren't getting. Somehow the director did not share the vision that I thought was clearly printed on the page, and it was like living in opposite day. But every once in a while, people will find new things that you didn't even know were there. I've seen moments where I went, really? You know, and, and then moments where I went, that's totally different than I thought. And they took it in a direction that I didn't even know it could go. I mean, that, you know, the thing about art is that it's so expansive. And in someone else's hand, the story is interpreted differently. The best example of that would be the Fulton Opera House in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They did The Turn of the Screw, and the production was absolutely breathtaking. They put us up there for four days in a bed and breakfast, and for four days it felt like being a playwright was a perfectly legitimate way to make a living, you know? Mm -hmm.